Well, he started out life as an electrician, but one day decided that he wasn't going to be a sparky anymore, and out of the blue, he became a prison officer. That's right. And then over the next 30 years, John Heffernan rose to the ranks of governor and managed some of Australia's most notorious criminals. Now he's turned his experiences into a tell-all book about life behind bars. Welcome, John. Now, you've worked in the prisons of Tamworth, Glen Innes, Grafton and Long Bay. In your experience throughout the years, do all criminals... Are they really the monsters that we kind of perceive them to be, or are they in, in actuality more normal? Most, um, most offenders are given a period of, of imprisonment, um, come into the system and conform mm -hmm. in, a, in a controlled environment. And usually do the time as quietly as they can, and at the end of that time, uh, go back into society and leave a, we hope, more abiding life. Having said that, there are an element within the jail system, the probably um, lats of the system that are, would be classified as monsters outside that are managed appropriately in a controlled environment, extremely controlled environment. Mm. Well, l let's go through some of the people that you've, you've had to control. Uh, Michael Murphy raped and murdered former beauty queen Anita Colby and uh, you came across him two years before this crime. Uh, what did you make of him then? One sort of wonderful thing, Kim. Um, I mean, even back then, he, he, he was a difficult, very difficult individual. I mean, he wasn't a very likeable person, I've got to be honest and say that. He was a short, straggly haired individual with a, with a laugh that was sort of out of control um, to the occasion. Um, he, he got into a fight on the occasion that I, that I recall with another inmate. And what, what really struck me was some two years later after the Anita Cobby killing, um, I saw that same person he had the fight with in a yard in Long Bay. And I spoke to him and I said, it's, um, it's not looking real good for, for your mate with what's, what appears to have happened. And what he said to me struck me at the time and I've never forgotten it. He, he said, I can understand it if she gave him a hard time. And I, I was just flabbergasted. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I just walked away and, and I was sorry I asked the question. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dealing, dealing with rapists and murderers as you did in that day-to-day -day life, I mean, how difficult was it to leave it at work and not take it home with you? You, you, don't, you don't act like a sponge. You, you can't soak it up. It would, it would be sort of um, extremely difficult to, to, to go home and, and operate that way. Having said that, uh, you're not a robot. You're a human being like everybody else and certain events do, do live in a lasting effect and uh, I mean I can understand just recently there was a prison officer that uh, retaliated when he was spat in the face by a prisoner and all of them retired and I left the system that happened to me some years ago mm -hmm. and I can understand, I can really understand how he felt at that time. I didn't retaliate, circumstances were a little bit different but I can understand because uh, some things do weigh you down. Yeah. It must be a very grinding system to be, you know, in control of such badness all the time. Um, it's, it, tell us, you know, a bit more of an insight into people like um, Russell Mad Dog Cox, for instance. Um, you know, from an external appearance, he seems to be everybody's worst nightmare. I come across Russell Cox. I'd been in the job a week. I was a probationary prison officer at Long Bay, and Russell Cox took, took a a uh, prison officer hostage along with two other uh, inmates and shot their way out of Long Bay. And that was uh, my initiation of the system. And it was a, it was a rough initiation. Mm. Uh, at the time I, I seriously contemplated the future as to whether I was going to stay in the job. Uh, Russell Cox was dragged past me that day, bloodied and beaten, and he was, um, he was ex extremely vicious at the time. Thirty years later I was the governor of the jail that, that he would be released from at Grafton. And he was a different character, an entirely different character. Now, whether he'd been real rehabilitated by the system, I, I doubt. I think it was just age mm. that had got to him and a realisation that probably it was a wasted life to some extent. Mm -hmm. He'd done his time and he was respectful, he was courteous. He'd he was, mellowed. He'd mellowed a lot. But some people thought he was pretending, didn't they? They did. I believed at the time that he wasn't. Mm. I was well, one of the few inmates that I supported his parole, saying that I didn't believe he would come back. Mm. I still stand by that. John, what, what is interesting is your stance on, on jail as a form of rehabilitation. I mean, how effective do you think it is? I don't think it is, Sonia. I mean, to be honest, it's, um, the aims of imprisonment are essentially 
uh, punishment and deterrence and, and rehabilitation. To say you're going to rehabilitate someone at the same time you're punishing them is a contradiction in terms. And I, I think in most instances the jail acts as a warehouse for a period of time. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, we see rehabil rehabilitation fail in tragic circumstances uh, frequently enough to be, uh, to be wary of it. W what's the toughest place in Australia to do time, in your experience? Oh, the Supermax, long at, um, at Goulburn. Goulburn? Absolutely. But then that's where the often lets the system are. Yeah. Yep. What's life like for him? Extremely controlled. Uh, very, very little time outside, outside cells and very little exercise time. And I think that's probably an appropriate environment. Mm. Yeah, because, I mean, on the whole, do you think that the justice system is too soft, too hard? I mean, where do you think it sits on that scale? I think, like everyone, I, I, I sometimes uh, concern when I see some of the sentences that are handed down from the judiciary. I think uh, some are probably too, far too lenient. I think the jail system's come a long way. It was um, extremely harsh when I joined. It was, um, it was actually exposed in a Royal Commission just after I began that it was a regime of savagery. savagery. Right. It's come a long way. Yeah. Where, where do you stand on the death penalty, having seen so much of this warehousing, as you call it? I don't think it, 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 it's appropriate, to be honest, Cam. I can recall um, a prisoner by the name of Carol Chessman back in, uh, in the 40s who was executed in America in, the, in 1960. Mm -hmm. He said he'd met a lot of uh, prisoners on, on death row, not one of which had ever, ever contemplated the consequences of their act. In other words, they never contemplated the fact that they were going to be yeah. executed. Mm. So it doesn't serve as a deterrent? Not a deterrent, no. Really interesting, um, John. Thank you so much. The book is called The Last Governor, and uh, the reason it's called that is because uh, the position, the title went with you when you retired, didn't it? And it did. now uh, the term general manager is used, but you indeed were the last governor, so pick it up. It's That's a right. good read. Thank you, Gav. Now Thank here's you. Janie. <laughs>